Hey Calvary family, this is John and the Marshall family coming to you live or actually via stream online uh, March 27th from our gymnasium. We're here to celebrate Adam's baptism uh, and we would love for you guys to join in with us as you guys get to participate in this momentous occasion as he takes this next step of obedience. Before we do so, Adam wants to share with you the reason why he's getting baptized today. March 19th, I was driving down the road and I lost awareness behind the wheel. I rolled through a red light and got in a car crash that easily could have taken my life if it were another second later. Later that night when I got home, I questioned you know, where I would have gone if I did die. Uh, I didn't have that answer, so that landed me in John's office the next morning, talking about faith and really making that next step in my faith. And that led me to the decision to get baptized today. All right, so Adam, if you want to get ready, mom and dad, if you want to take your positions as well, we'll give them a minute to get there. And I just, all right, Adam, upon your profession of faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, your Father and I, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah, all right, man. Amen, Amen brother. Hey, Calvary family, I just want to share a quick devotional as we celebrate Adam's baptism. This is coming from 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 3 through 7. Paul is admonishing his son in the faith, Timothy, in verse 3, saying, I thank God whom I serve, as did my ancestors with a clear conscience, as I remember you constantly in my prayers, day and night. And even though Paul was away from Timothy, he constantly thought of him remembering him in his prayers in the morning, his prayers in the evening. And even though we're far apart currently in our state of quarantine, it doesn't change the fact that we're connected through the prayers uh, that we lift up towards our God as he, ministers, as he ministers those prayers through his Holy Spirit. And my admonishment and encouragement for you guys as a youth group, as a church, is that we continue praying for one another constantly. It says, verse 4, As I remember your tears, I long to see you, that I may be filled with joy. The life that we've shared, the moments where we've cried together, the moments where we had highs, the moments we've had lows. He says he remembers those and he longs for our meeting again. And as we're in this stage of longing to meet again, because it will come again, we'll have that joy restored to us when face to face we can embrace, we can encourage, we can worship together and be filled with that joy that comes as worshiping our God in community. Verse 5, I'm reminded of your sincere faith a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. And now I'm sure dwells in you as well. And as we saw, uh, Adam's parents were here. Part of the, out of the, of the baptism is his dad participating. His mom was taking pictures uh, of it and sharing it with actually his grandmother. This is a legacy of faith for our parents and our grandparents out there. That this is something you pour into that's progressive and, and bears fruit. And you never know what circumstances may lead to that? And, and if you're listening to, to Adam's testimony, um, it came about in circumstances that most people wouldn't actually even consider how, going through an, an accident like he did, that it would lead him to a point where he wanted to take the next step of faith. And I praise God for that. Verse 6, For this reason I remind you to fan into flame the, the gifts of God. You know, as we are maybe home now more often and as time has increased, um, it's like a, a fire that's been burning for a while. It's easy sometimes to get in rhythms that maybe that, that, that glow of that faith that kind of dwindles a little bit. There's embers now. And, and Paul's saying, Timothy, fan that flame of faith. And I would encourage you guys to find ways to fan the flame of your faith, even though you're home, even though maybe you can't go and do activities like you once did. But when you walk outside, appreciate God's creation. When you meet someone for the next time, thank God for that a chance even to meet somebody. When you pray for somebody, lift them up in prayers, thanking them that even though we're far apart, we're one in Christ. And that God is meeting our needs every single day. He goes on to verse 7. For God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power, love, and self-control. And may that encourage you guys. That we don't have to fear what's going on in our current context. Not in the sense of like we shouldn't be wise about it and make adjustments to stay healthy and safe. But ultimately, if God's for us, who can be against us? If God's with us, who can stand against him? 
that God's given us a spirit of power and of love, that we can be loving even though we're separated through our prayers, through our connections online, and through other means. And also exercising self-control that we're not called now to stop believing, but actually the opposite, fan our faith flames even more so through daily prayer, daily reading, daily spiritual disciplines of ways we can connect to God and to one another. Thank you guys so much for joining us and celebrating this baptism. We're excited for Adam as he takes the next step of obedience. If you have questions about getting baptized, please feel free to message uh, anybody at Calvary on the pastoral staff or even talk to your parents and let's see what next step is for you. Thanks again. Have a good one, guys.